Blockchain is about empowerment of the people. It goes to the grassroots society to make sure and guarantee the benefit is to the producers, to the community. IOHK is in Ethiopia now to train a class of 22 young Ethiopian women and four Ugandan women. And the idea is to train them in Haskell and if they succeed to uh, employ them. There's a problem with believing in Africans as developers. People would rather outsource their technologies than trust in us who have done four three-year courses to develop for them their software. So that's a really, really big challenge, embracing technology and also believing in ourselves to develop softwares. Being able to build these transparent and decentralized systems is a big privilege and a great opportunity for me. And when I heard about it, I heard that experts that are working in the field are coming to teach us. So it's something that we've never had before. So it's pretty exciting. The blockchain community as a whole agrees that Africa is an incredibly exciting region because there aren't legacy systems in place, because this technology is cheap and that's obviously attractive to the continent. But which problems to solve and what appropriate solutions are is often much harder. And it's a lot harder to do if you're asking these questions or coming up with these ideas from London, New York or San Francisco. I think it's very important to actually go somewhere to really experience it. I mean, of course, you hear about the challenges in developing countries like Ethiopia, but to actually experience it firsthand is a completely different story. The traffic, the internet, the infrastructure and so on. So by doing this training course here and training this, uh, this group of developers, we're going to have people who understand the technology, understand how to build solutions on it, but crucially also understand what problems we should be building solutions for. The youth are open to new ideas and new development. Creativity comes mostly when there is a problem. A very good example on the African level would be coffee farming. There's a lot of uh, participants involved in this sector. There's the producers, the manufacturers, the processors, the suppliers. So the fact that you can keep track of your coffee from point A to point B to point C, you could uh, keep track of everything that's happening to the produce. The most important thing is identity to the products. And when we have a record of our activities and how our production is going, through which levels it goes and who are the consumers and what is the price over there and who is really benefiting. And coffee farming is just one example out of all the many that uh, we could apply blockchain technology to and this could impact people's lives. I'm personally interested in the health uh, sector because I have friends that are working as doctors and nurses and the like and usually when referrals are made to governmental uh, hospitals they don't have full records, full medical history of the patients. Things like this I feel can be tackled by blockchain technology. To my country Uganda recently there is a big problem of land wrangles. People keep on buying land more than once so if at all we put this system into blockchain and everything becomes digital, I don't think our country will have the same problem again. For me, incorporating blockchain into all these sectors would be a really big deal. The fact that we wouldn't have one elected party controlling the system, but a, a, a whole lot of transparency for all of us to see what's going on. I love being here and hearing all about how um, blockchain would affect various um, aspects of the economy in, the, in this country and perhaps throughout Africa. So um, it's really cool to be part of the conversation and be part of making it possible. These are all really interesting projects for which there's huge demand across both government and private sector. 
So when it comes to IOHK deciding what technology we're going to be building, baking into Cardano and, and our other products, this information is definitely being fed back. Um, we're looking to build solutions for these problems all this year. I mean, I am the teacher and I'm here to teach the students, but uh, actually it's also the other way around that I, by being here, learn a lot and a whole new appreciation for, for how important our work actually is and what blockchain can possibly do for these countries and these people. Yeah, what I think uh, the role of IOHK uh, is there, like with a Haskell training that is happening right now, is to really bring um, or add to the curriculum if that yeah, developers get in the universities, like in this line of education, because Universities are not that fast in um, yeah, adopting new technologies, uh, even though, of course, there is some research happening. There are new things uh, also being developed at universities, but um, they're often disconnected from the private sector. So this kind of, I would, I would even describe it as a collaboration uh, between public sector and IOHK because, um, yeah, you, you just, create more value for the educational system on the one side and you create value for IOHK so you can uh, reach out to a large community and that's at the end of the day what you need. You need people here on the ground uh, who are working on this topic, who are working with this technology and uh, therefore it's a great job. Emerging technologies are attractive to young upcoming youth. I read a statistic somewhere that 70% of the world's youth in 2050 will be in Africa and a significant portion of the young. So this is an opportunity to target those uh, and there will be a lot of opportunities around that. What's lacking is not the, uh, the technology, what's lacking is the know-how. Uh, but I think if, if we can solve that, there could be massive amounts of leapfrogging. This is not about catch-up, this is about leapfrogging. So, Maybe the next uh, best thing in the world will come out of Africa. I'm really impressed by the students' attitude, their eagerness to learn and so on. But it's more than that. I mean, it's really humbling how, how much they sacrifice to be in this course. I mean, there are students who left their children behind with their family for two months uh, just to be able to attend this course. Others quit their jobs or basically put their university degree on hold just to be able to, to attend. So this really puts a lot of pressure also on us as instructors in a good way, I mean, because it really shows how important this is and, and this is not just some exercise. So it's incredibly exciting for me to see the progress which this course really uh, represents. When I moved over here first in maybe February or March of last year, you know, we had a lot of ideas. I was having lots of conversations with uh, Charles about what we can do. And to see this incredibly ambitious plan now for 2019 with huge rich outs across uh, dozens and dozens of countries, um, real education programs working both through IOHK led courses and also accreditation with universities and the capacity to actually build solutions uh, through the teams that we're building out and hiring here. Um, I think it's going to be a great year and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing with the halt. I'm really extremely happy to be here because I love teaching and I love education, I love Haskell, I love mathematics. So it's already great working for IHK where I can do all these things. But combining that with, with the chance to actually help people improve their lives and really make a difference, uh, that is, I can't think of any better thing to do. I've loved mathematics and programming almost my whole life. And I love working with mathematics, I love working with computers, and I love teaching. But all of that is somehow dwarfed by what I feel now being in, in Ethiopia here and, and actually having the chance to, to really have an impact on, on so many people's lives. So this is like a great conclusion. I mean, I feel I'm ex almost as if all my training, all my university years, everything built up to this point where finally I'm in, in a situation to, to give this class and, and share my knowledge with people that really can use it to, to change the world for the better. For me, I want to see a world that's controlled by technology, not only Africa, but the world.